Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is lesson three in our series on quadratics for Math 20-1. Uh, and this is where we'll look at one of the other techniques we can use to solve these equations um, using our graphing calculator. Now, this is the pretty standard one uh, in Edmonton High Schools. Like, pretty much this is the one in Edmonton High Schools. There, there are others uh, for graphing calculators outside of the Texas Instruments brand. Um, which will also do the same things. The problem is there's so many different calculators with so many different models um, that, you know, I don't know them all, all the Casios and Sharps and other things like that. They will do the same things, um, but this is the pretty standard one uh, that people across, you know, Edmonton and Alberta for that matter, uh, use uh, as a graphing calculator. I don't know if like we have an in with Texas Instruments or what, but uh, this is the one, and I even have mine still from high school that I remember. Uh, using uh, when I was in school so uh, it is the one that we will use to do this uh, there are other options uh, Desmos is one it's a pretty popular one so I'll, I can put the link uh, in the description box too uh, and, it, and it makes it very easy uh, to graph things the problem is um, you know if you're somebody that is currently in high school watching this uh, you probably can't use Desmos in, in your classroom for a quiz or exam or something uh, outside of that environment uh, you know Desmos is great to use at home. It's very user friendly, um, and you know I can even open a tab. Uh, it's very easy uh, to you know graph some things. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, this so this is Desmos, and you know as you type things in, so I can type in you know just any generic uh, quadratic equation. So x squared plus two x minus six, for example. Uh, and we can see, you know, this is what the graph will look like. You can click and hold and you'll see some coordinate pairs. You can see a vertex, you can see a y-intercept, you can see the two places it crosses the x-axis at the same time, you can see all the, the you know, the x-intercepts as well. So it's very, very powerful, very, very easy to use. Um, but I mean, in like a secure environment for a quiz or exam, obviously not a tool that you can use. Um, so I'll show you how to use your graphing calculator, uh, which will do the same things, just not as, you know, as nicely. So let's do this together here. Um, so if you have a calculator, you can open it up. Um, there are links where you can, you know, navigate around that, some of the corners of the internet to download an emulator for one of these which I can't give you the links to any of those to promote, you know, like copyright infringement, things like that. But, um, you know, you could find them. There are apps as well for the, uh, in the app store um, uh, that will do this. And, you know, if you're an Android user on Google Play, there, there are some options as well. Um, so I can put some of the ones that I recommend to students uh, in the link again. Um, so you can find those because uh, you can download those straight from the App Store and the Play Store. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about how we can use this. So there's a couple definitions up at the top. Uh, first one says equation, uh, and it's a statement that the values of two mathematical mathematical expressions are equal, which is something you've seen before. It's indicated by the equal sign. Okay, a function is something we talk e extensively about in Math 10, um, and basically from here on out for Math 20-1, Math 30-1. Uh, math 31 for that matter, uh, functions are everywhere. Um, and it's an equation that has only one answer for y for every value of x. So each input has a unique output associated with it. Um, they match, you know, the domain and range match up in a one-to-one -one fashion is another way you can talk about it. Roots is a new thing uh, where the roots for us are gonna be the solutions of an equation. So there'll be a couple ways we can describe the solution to the equation. Um, or a quadratic equation for that matter. One of the ways that we did this in the last video, we, we, we could factor something uh, to solve for, for the values that will make this true, solve for the solution. So let's factor this first, just to recap of what we did uh, you know, in the last video there. Um, so we could find you know, two numbers that multiply to negative six, the same two numbers add to minus one. Um, so you could have x minus um, two and I think that's actually x plus two. Uh, x plus two and x minus three. So those will multiply for minus six, add those together for minus one. Um, so there's our factors, and you can solve for the solutions by taking each factor, making it equal to zero. So one of them is x minus two, 
um, the other solution here, which now we know is called a root, um, is negative two and well three. Those are my two roots. Uh, so the roots are x equals negative two and x equals three, right? Those are the solutions we just calculated together. Uh, part B says, use your calculator to graph this quadratic and use the zero feature to determine the x-intercepts. So there's a couple ways we can do this. So if you've got a TI-84, 83 is also fine, 86 as well, but like the buttons are maybe in a different place. Um, so in the top left corner for me, there's a y equals button. If I press it, I can then put in some equations. So I'm going to put in the original equation that we started with. Um, so the x button's next to alpha, so x squared minus x minus 6. And if I hit graph, it should draw me uh, that quadratic function. So there's what it will look like. And we're going to be looking for the x-intercept. So I'll put the keystrokes uh, in B, the order I did them. Um, so I hit y equals first. Then you can type in the equation. Once you've done that, press graph. And this is then now what we're going to see is the picture. And there is, it says to use the zero feature. And in, in order to get it, you're going to have to hit the second button and then trace. Okay, this will bring up our calculate menu. So we'll do that together. So second button, then trace. There's our big calculate menu. Option number two is zero. So you can even just press the two key. You can scroll down to zero and then hit enter. Um, but if you just press two, it'll come up for us. Okay, so this is how we get to the zero feature. Now what a zero means is we're looking for the value that we can plug into this equation to make it equal to zero. And that should sound very familiar because we know what those two values are supposed to be already. Right, one of the first things we did is factor something, make it equal to zero. We found those solutions, then we verified them by putting them back in. We actually did that uh, a couple videos ago. So if x is 3 and I put it into the equation, it will make the equation 0. So what the feature on your calculator really is asking you to do here, it really what it allows you to do is find the x-intercept. Now your calculator will ask you a couple questions. Left bound is one of them. So we need to move our cursor by using the left and right arrow keys to set the left boundary that our calculator will use to search through. So we're gonna make it essentially put that cursor above your x-intercept, hit enter, and you'll see a little triangle pop up. It's hard to see because the cursor's in the way. So if I move it, there is a little triangle on the screen there. And now your calculator changes questions to right boundary. So we need to move that cursor in such a place that it's on the right side of our x-intercept. Now really it's below it, but in terms of the x values, one of them you're setting the boundary on the left side, the other one you're setting the boundary on the right side, your calculator will search in between the two boundaries. You'll know where it's going to look because there's going to be two triangles there pointing to each other. Now your x-intercept should lie somewhere in between there. Your calculator's question will now change to guess, so press enter one more time and it will tell you what the zero is. It will tell you um, and I'll write it down here that one of the zeros is the point negative two zero. It's literally the x value that makes this equation zero. The input is minus two, the output is zero into this function if you use that notation. Um, so my x value for one of them is minus two, which is exactly what we got by factoring. Now in order to go find the other one, we have to do those same button strokes again and then move our cursor over to the other side of the graph. We have to do each intercept independently. I can't do them both at the same time. Now it says left bound again, so again, make sure your cursor is in such a place that the x coordinate of the cursor is on the left side of your intercept. In this case, that means your cursor should be below the axis. Right boundary, make sure your, you know, your x coordinate of that cursor is on the right side of that intercept, hit enter. Your calculator will search in between those triangles. There should be your other zero. We knew it was going to be three before we did this. The other one's at in, you know, an x value of three and a y value of zero. Okay, your calculator also will show you a table of values. 
um, if you look on the graph key up above in that second color there it says table so you can press second to graph and it will bring up a table and it will tell you there are only a couple places for y values where you're going to see zeros right one of them uh, is when y is zero x could either be minus two or positive three the other value in there so your table of values will work also to show you the exact same thing so there's four ways we can describe a solution now. Okay, so a solution, which is what we got what we got by factoring, making them equal to zero, we called them a solution. It's also called a root. It's also called a zero, and they are also x-intercepts. Okay, all four of these things can be interchanged in, in terms of what we call them. So you do need to know all four um, because they mean the same thing. Okay, so there we go. We can use our calculator to do it without factoring, and this is a nice way to double check that your factoring was correct. If you graph the original equation, then determine those intercepts, you should get the same result. If you don't, something's very wrong. Okay, so zeros are your x-intercepts. So let's try this uh, a couple times here. It says for each quadratic, solve for the roots, check using our calculator. Now, one of the things we said is, well, if this is a zero, we're looking for the value of x to make our equation equal to zero. Problem is right now it's equal to 33. So I'm gonna move the 33 to the other side. So now x squared plus eight x minus 33 is equal to zero. There's the function we're gonna deal with. Okay, now you could try to factor this, three, two numbers that multiply to 33 and add to eight, uh, some combination of 11 and 30. 3. Yeah, 11 and 3 looks good. 8, 9, 10. Yeah, that seems fine. Um, so x plus 11, x minus 3 equal to 0. Now what this tells me is that x is going to be negative 11 or x is going to be 3. And again, I said in a previous video that factoring is so crucial that the speed that you factor is super important because we're going to start to do a lot of things outside of factoring. So there's my two solutions that I'm going to get. Now the interesting about your calculator is it defaults to having a window, so the screen on it only goes from negative 10 to 10. Now I know one of my x's is negative 11 already, so I'm going to have to adjust the scale on here. Uh, so I'm going to make the minimum value for x negative 15, everything else should be fine. I might just not see the peak, um, or what we call vertex, of this graph. Right now it's not as important and I really just care about the x-intercepts. So we'll graph our quadratic again, x squared plus 8x minus 33. Hit graph. So again, like I said, I'm not going to see the bottom. I knew that already. But there's my two x-intercepts, which I really care about. So we'll do our second trace. Option 2 says 0. Now, I don't see my cursor on here, but underneath it's going to tell me where it is. So right now I know that x is negative 2.5 on the cursor but I need to get all the way over here. So I'm gonna keep going left and eventually you'll see it pop up from underneath. As we get close there, there it is. So there's our cursor. So left side, enter, right side, enter again, enter one more time, there's our zero. We knew it was gonna be negative 11 because we could factor it and solve for it, but we double check using the calculator. So there's our negative 11. We can do this one more time for the other side. So our cursor will stay. Um, so let's move this down a bit and you can see the x value changes so we're getting closer to zero and then we'll start to see it come up on the right side there okay there it is so left side of it right side of it enter enter and there's the other one of three so i know i did this correctly because my factors match up to the zeros on my calculator everything looks good we can try b as well and again i know already what my zeros are going to be because this is factored form already. So for one of them, x is going to be negative 5 over 4. The other one is going to be 3. This time I have a decimal. So my calculator is quite handy in the sense that, well, I don't have to put things in in the original, you know, standard form uh, of that quadratic. I can use, you know, the factored form to do this. So I could even hit 6, put in brackets, 4x plus 5, and then the other one's x minus 3. It's already equal to 0, so I'm going to hit graph again. 
And I should see my intercepts here. Now, my graph has such a narrow shape this time, which we'll talk about in a later video, uh, but really it's the six on the outside. That extra factor of six controls how narrow this is gonna be. And again, I only need the x-intercept, so I don't even care about the rest of the graph right now. So let's do this again. And let's find our cursor here first. Uh, I think I went way too far. Where's x is zero? My cursor should pop up. I just saw it for a second. And there it is, okay. So one is underneath it. One more for above it. There we go. There's our zero of three, got that one. Do it one more time, but on the other side of things, now you can see the numbers are jumping very, very quickly. Um, so there's X is right around zero. So it should be uh, just to the right of that origin. Now I'm on the negative side of things right there. So I'm going to see it start to come up really quickly on this side. There it is. So left bound should be above. There it is. Right bound below. And there is my other zero. Okay, at negative 1.25. So this screen will only tell you a decimal. Now if you hit second mode to go back to your normal screen, your calculator saves the last value of x that you calculated. So if you hit your variable button, which is to the right of alpha and then enter, there is the last value of x we got. There's the last solution we got from that zero feature. And if you press math option one, it will turn it into a lowest terms fraction if possible. Some numbers just can't be written as fractions because they are irrational numbers. But there's the exact same thing. So your calculator will do this every time as long as there are some x-intercepts. Okay, we can do the bottom one together as well. But again, you can factor it first. So look for a common factor. There is one of two. x squared minus four is what remains. And there's a difference of squares pattern. So I'm going to have two zeros, one of which um, will be x is equal to positive 2. The other one is x is equal to negative 2. So I'm going to be symmetrical uh, around the origin here. Positive 2 and negative 2 bookend this on either side. So let's type in our equation. Uh, there's our minus 8 graph. And I'll reset this back to the standard window. So if you ever want to reset it back to normal, hit zoom option six, and it will recenter your window being a 10 by 10. So I'm gonna be centered around that origin. Uh, it's a bit, little bit lower, uh, but symmetrical around it. And there I can see my two intercepts. So second trace, option two is zero. Left boundary first, right boundary second, enter, enter. Negative two is one of them, which I knew already. The other one on the other side of the graph. So there's my left bound. There's my right bound. Enter. Positive two is the other. It's perfect. Okay, so I can use this to double check, which is much faster than plugging values into it, multiplying your factored form back out. It's usually not something you want to do because then you're just undoing all the work you just did. Um, so this last part here, we'll do it together because that really brings us to the end. Really, this is a calculator lesson. Um, determine the zeros, uh, and this should say x-intercepts, actually. Uh, actually, do I want to do that? Uh, no, we can find the y-intercepts, too. Let's leave it as is. So zeros for x-intercepts, uh, we'll find the y-intercepts also. Uh, and then we can write our function in factored form. So let's go find these zeros first. Uh, so clear out your equation. We'll put in 3x squared plus 4x uh, minus 7 graph. Okay, there's what it looks like. So it's nice to see the whole picture. I got my vertex on there and we got our intercepts. So let's go get them. So zero, left boundary is somewhere above, right boundary is below. Okay, so there's the value of x. So let's make it into a, a fraction because it's gonna make this a whole lot easier. x equals negative seven over three is one of my zeros. I'll go back to our graph to get the other one. And as long as we're below, that's left side. As long as we're above here, that's right side. And x equals one. Okay, so there's the two zeros. Now, what we did before is we took those, um, we took our factors 
and got to the zeros by solving for x. Well, let's undo everything we just did and make sure that one side's equal to zero because if I think about this and I undo all of that, that's gonna give me the factor. So we'll do it with the right side one first. Makes it a little easier to think about. So we're just wanting to get one side being equal to zero. So I'm gonna undo solving for x. So I know that x minus one should be zero. And if I take a factor and make it equal to zero, I could solve for the actual value. But if I do it in reverse, this means that x minus one is a factor doing this backwards. Now if I do the same thing on the other side, well that means that 3x is equal to minus 7, so that if I add a 7 to both sides, well this is now going to tell me that 3x plus 7 is equal to 0. Therefore, 3x plus 7 is a factor. So in factored form, I know now that I didn't leave myself enough room here. So let's do that. Okay, so that means that after that whole process, that means that this function, f of x, can be written as 3x plus 7 multiplied by x minus 1. There's the factors, and I, I got it in factored form without even doing any factoring. And you can check if this works by, you know, typing in the same thing. So I can move my cursor down and I can graph up to 10 things on here. You can see that there's more. So I can go up to 10. So I'm gonna graph the factored form in here as well. 3x plus seven, and the other one is x minus one. Now, if you think about this, if I hit graph, I shouldn't see two pictures. I shouldn't see two graphs. If these are identical in value, that they mean the same thing, I should only see one parabola being graphed, which I don't see even another one. I don't see another one. So I know I did this correctly, and those are my factors. Now, if you think about finding your y-intercept, every y-intercept has the same thing in common. The x-coordinate is zero. So if you think about plugging zero into this graph, I know my y-intercept already is gonna be seven. So if my function has an input of zero, that means my output value is seven, which means that zero comma seven is the y-intercept. And you can find this on your graph a couple ways. Um, if you go second trace again, that calculate menu, option one allows you to put in a value and it allows you to put in a value for x. So if you know that a y-intercept, all of them, has a x coordinate of zero, oh, and I'm sorry, in that set of brackets, that should be minus seven. So x is zero, hit enter, there is your y-intercept of minus seven. Okay, your calculator will tell you that also. So I can do this very, very quickly. Look how fast I could factor this now as long as I know what the zeros are. So you can do the same thing here, but now something's being cubed. Now this is no longer a quadratic equation, uh, rather a cubic equation, which isn't something that's in the Math 20-1 curriculum, but the base idea of this is the same. The same principles are true, it's just something that we talk more about in Math 30-1. So I, I can do this here for you, 4x cubed minus 7x squared minus 4x plus 7 and then hit graph. Now the graph's gonna look a little funky. Uh, it goes up, comes back down, and goes up again and this has to do with the odd power here and um, really the zeros have the same meaning uh, for, for this type of graph. We're gonna find the x-intercepts once again using our zero feature. Nothing's different, we just have to do it one extra time because there is a third place where this graph crosses my x-axis. One of my zeros is x is equal to minus one. One of the solutions is x equals minus one. One of the roots is x equals minus one. All of those words are interchangeable. We can do it one more time here. x is equal to one is another. We can do it one more time for the third one. Or x equals 1.75 and I want that as a as a fraction so let's change it using our calculator pretty easy um, x equals 7 over 4 so there's the three uh, x-intercepts here the three solutions we can work backwards by turning them into factors so x plus 1 is equal to 0 so therefore x plus 1 is a factor 
x minus one equals to zero, so I've got x minus one is a factor. And for this one, I've got four x is equal to seven, so four x minus seven equals zero. Therefore, four x minus seven is a factor as well. So I got them all. Uh, so now I know that g of x, my new func my function in the question, can be written as 4x minus 7 multiplied with x plus 1 multiplied with x minus 1. Fully factored, didn't have to do any fancy techniques outside, because like, I can't really deal uh, with the cube in the same way that I do all of our quadratic um, polynomials that I can factor. So there's my three factors that came from my zeros which again is a big part of polynomials in math 30 when you think about the you know synthetic division which if you know that already um, great if not it's not, not something we do in this course again uh, but you can do long division with polynomials uh, and you know the remainder theorem and, and zeros and all of those things uh, you know it all starts here math just kind of spirals in on itself um, so there's my factors came from my zeros my zeros came from my calculator my y-intercept here is also going to be the constant it's still true here, if x is zero, first term is zero, second term is zero, third term is zero. So you can calculate it again if you want. Second trace, option one, put in x as zero, there is your y-intercept of seven. Okay. So we can write that more formally. So uh, if our input is zero, our output is seven, therefore, zero seven is the y-intercept. So I can do all of the things that we can do by hand with that calculator, but I mean factoring is so crucial um, to be able to interpret what you even see from that calculator. It's one of the most important concepts coming out of 10C uh, going into Math 20. Right? So that brings us to the end of this. Um, when we, when you see the next video, we'll talk more about like some of the features of a quadratic function, what some of the other forms of an equation can tell us, and what we can do with them. Uh, and then we'll start to get into the applications, like where does this become useful uh, to do some of those context con contextual problems. I feel like I said that word wrong. Anyways, problems with context. Um, so you'll see that in the next video. So until then, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and, uh, and we'll see you next time. Take care.